great about that, other than trying to help people who are in the state of disease. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the Immigration Answers Show. Hey, I just made a rhyme. I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. Hey, how's everybody doing? This is episode number 484 of the Immigration Answers Show. I am here outside D1, where Nor, not D's nuts, but D1, where Nor is doing some physical training from 4 till 5.30. So I'll be here answering all of your immigration law related questions that I can hope everybody's doing well. If you're new to the show or haven't been here before, leave us a comment and let us know where you're watching from. We would really appreciate it. want to say thanks to hope who was the first one to hit the like button today. Thank you. Hope very much. Glad to see everybody's here. James is here. Chetty, Robert, uh, Shubham wants to know if they can buy a house as an F1. Yes, you can buy a house if the bank will lend you the money. Uh, but there's no rule against an F1. I mean, you might worry about immigrant intent. So I would sort of think that through, maybe have an LLC by the house um, in any event. Bakari's watching from Nigeria. Bris P is here. H&M is here as usual. Good to see everybody. Rafat is dialing in from Chicago. Kadish is in Atlanta. Ross and Mila are here. Good to see everybody. The waiting room is already filling up. Hope's watching her favorite show from Florida. Thank you, Hope. Hope always says that. That always makes me happy when I see that. Uh, we got Florida, Colorado, Rocio's here in Columbus, of course. Um, like I said, I'm an immigration attorney. We have offices in St. Louis, San Diego, and Washington, D.C. I shot three new videos this morning, um, so those will be coming to you soon in the next couple of days. I did one on people getting busted at the airport with their phones after they've gotten their green card. I did one on bringing kids to your green card interview. I forget what the third one was. Also, I'm wearing my Northwestern sweatshirt because today I spoke to about 110, 115 international students from the wonderful university that is Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois. Had a great talk, answered a lot of questions, shared my slides, spread the love, spread the word. I love talking to international students. I love teaching them about how immigration worked in America. You know, maybe one day I could just do my presentation that I do for them here for you guys. That might be helpful. That would be a good idea, especially if I'm feeling sort of tired one day. We got NYC Ghana here. APF is watching from New York, sends his salams or her salams. Uh, Kofi's here in Atlanta. Oh, hey, Kofi. How you doing, buddy? All right, let's get started. RDK is here. What do you say, RDK? Like, I'm having a hard time. Your your audio is all jacked up. Can you hear me okay? No, it doesn't sound good at all. Uh, I'm sorry. I'll come, uh, I'll come back, RDK. We'll try it again in a little bit. Let's go to Ali. Hello, Ali. <laughs> Ali, are you with us? <laughs> Ali. Hey, Jim. How you doing? Good, 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 good. Can you take me on? off camera? Yep, you're off camera. Yeah, I have a question. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you doing? Good, good, good. I have a question. My I-751 has been, has been with the USCIS for like almost 19 months now. Mm -hmm. And I um, haven't heard anything. Um, there was a time that I sent, um, I sent, um, I sent, I, I told, I told them when I move, I moved from where I used to live before to a new place, and I, and I notified them that I, I was moving, and Great. since then they sent me the um, another new extension later. Okay. So since Next then I haven't heard anything. I wouldn't be worried about 19 months. Just about everybody's taking 25 months, 24 months, 25 months. So I think you're right on track. I wouldn't be worried. How's how's everything with the marriage, okay? The marriage is good. The marriage is good. Yeah, so you're just chilling. It'll probably be it'll probably be a couple more months. Did you apply for citizenship? Not yet. 
you're just waiting to see what happens with the green card? Yes, I just um, I wanted to apply for citizenship, and I was like, I, I talked to my lawyer, and he said maybe you should you should just wait and see how the I seventy five one go before you apply. I said okay, well, and I, I mean, said. I that's what I used to do, but now they just take so damn long on everything, and I actually think the N-400 can move the 751 along. So we've been telling people lately that if everything's cool with the marriage, to go ahead and file the N-400 as well. Okay, sounds good. I have another question. I have another question for you. Go for and the it. Question is, the question is, um, okay, this one is, is a different question. I have a question about, um, okay, this will happen. My mother is my mod my mother, I was trying to okay, this is what happened. My my brother lives in Canada okay. and um is trying to process um um is trying to process an application for mom to visit him. But this is what happened. Um when he was we have a family name and my dad changed our name to uh, to our family name. But my my mom is bearing my dad's name. So okay. when my brother was filling the application, he put um, he put. Wait, are you asking about an application for Canada? He, are you asking about an application for Canada? Yes, I don't know anything about Canada. Okay, okay. Thanks, Ali. Okay. See you, buddy. Thank you. Very, thank you very much. Later. Yeah, we get a lot of questions about Canada. A lot of people hitting us up for Canada. Maybe I should open up an office in Canada. I have friends who do Canadian immigration. One is um, Evelyn Aka, and the other is Amelia Koto. So I have good referrals for Canadian immigration lawyers if you need them. Let's go back to RDK, see if he got his audio going. RD, are you there? Hello, James. Can you hear me or can you now? It's not great, but I can go with it. Go for it. What's your question? Okay, the question is... Um... If I have a sealed record in Canada from 41 years ago, I sealed in 1998. Uh, I now find for a big time by a marriage. Uh, and that record, before it was sealed, that record was never picked up by the CBD. Uh, as I crossed back and forth between countries now 127 times. I'm from the United States on an L1B visa. So, RD, I'm going to have to get you off there. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I'm going to try to answer your question. I can barely hear you. I don't know what's up with the audio, but here's what I'll say. In immigration, there's no such thing as a sealed record. So if you have an arrest, if you have a crime, if you have a conviction from 41 years ago and it is sealed, when it comes to immigration, it is not sealed. So you have to admit it. You have to uh, you have to um, talk about it. You have to get the records of it. So there's no such thing as a sealed record when it comes to immigration. I can't hear you, brother. I think he said, is that true of Canadian records? Yes, that's true of Canadian records. Anywhere in the world, when they ask you, have you ever been arrested? If you've been arrested, you have to declare it even though you had it sealed. That that doesn't change the fact that you were arrested. It doesn't change the fact that you were in front of a judge. It doesn't change the fact that you were in criminal proceedings. The United States government doesn't give a hoot about whether you sealed the record in Canada, in Zimbabwe, or in the United States. I hope that helps. I'm sorry the audio was so bad. Let's go to Ray. Hello, Ray. You're on mute. Hi, Jim. Can you hear me? Hi, Ray. Yeah, how um, you doing? I have a quick question. So basically, uh, we filed a spousal application uh, for a green card. Uh, I-130 was approved. It's, it's an adjustment of status application in the United States. It was, a, uh, it was filed in the Brooklyn office. And they asked for a medical RFE and I sent it, uh, it was received. Uh, I have the documentation of that. It was January, 2023. And then I yeah. uh, basically moved to Los Angeles and right now in Los Angeles and a year later, they asking the same RFE from me. Uh, <laughs> they, sent, they sent me an email 
and uh, basically saying that, uh, yeah, you have to send the uh, sealed documents. And I already sent it last year and it was received. And now I feel like they lost it. And mm -hmm. basically I sent the copy of that, what I sent in the sealed document last year. And uh, they say the copy of it is not sufficient and they want the sealed document, even though I sent it and I have proofs for these. Even though, uh, also one side note, on myuscis.gov, uh that was showing that my response was received on may uh, 18th uh, 2023 and it seems like transferring from brooklyn to los angeles somehow they lost my uh, medical exam and what should i do at this point what's the most practical solution i think that's exactly right i think they lost it and so my question for you is would you rather be right or would you rather have your green card exactly yeah so, so i would i would I would reach out to whoever did your medical before and say, hey, those morons at USAS lost it. Can I pay you a hundred bucks and get another copy of it, a new updated copy of it sealed? Or if that won't work, then I would go to the civil surgeon in Los Angeles, get a new one and send it to them. Okay. Actually, the one I got, it was in Los Angeles. He's okay. uh, still here, but they asked it from broken office last year. And so I can go back to that same guy I, I, again, I guess. Perfect. Some 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 doctors will do it for free. Some doctors will charge you a limited price, and some will charge you full price. Just hopefully you get a good one. I don't have to get the medical exam once again, like the blood test and everything. You think? Not if it's the same doctor, and they say you don't. But otherwise, you probably do. Okay. Thank you so much, Jeff. Thank you so much. Bye, Ray. Good luck. Thank you. Have a good one. Yeah, they lose that shit, don't they? They lose that shit, don't they? It's really sort of sad. Hey, um, Robert had a good question. He wants to know if uh, Northwestern is in the Ivy League. Northwestern is not an Ivy League school, but it's close enough, man. When I talk to those students up there, they are so dialed in. They are so freaking smart. It makes my head hurt because, of course, I could never have gotten into Northwestern. I think I applied, but I certainly didn't get in. Um, they are some big brain people up at Northwestern, so it's a wonderful school. I'm going to go up there. Amani and I will go up there in February. Um I really like it up there. I like being on the campus and I got the sweatshirt last time I went there. So um, one of the favorite schools that I do my, my talks at Pablo is here. What do you say, Pablo? Hey, hello, Gene. How are you? I'm good. How you doing? I'm doing great as well. Uh, I called like, a few weeks ago to your show uh, just to summarize my, my case. Uh, I'm married to a U.S. citizen. I, we filed for adjustment of his status back in February. I was a F1 student at the time. Great. I already graduated, okay? So the thing is that I uh, I received an RFP uh, for the form I-485 back in October, uh, at the end of September, and I replied to it at the beginning of October, okay? And the thing is that at the same time, they also showed up in the portal that they also sent an RFP for the I-130 form. But then immediately that status changed to actively review. Okay. So in the portal, uh, I could see the RFP for the form I-85. However, I didn't see any form for the I-130. Right. So I assume that maybe they just post that update and they change their mind. Yep. So, uh, <laughs> Now I contacted them because it's been a while and they told me that they sent an RFP for the I-130 and apparently uh, they got the, 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 uh, the mail back because they couldn't deliver it. Uh, but nothing showed up in the portal. And uh, what they told me was that uh, probably I forgot to update the petitioner uh, address because at the time, at the moment that I filed, I, I, I moved uh, from uh, that location. I moved to another place. And I went to the website, used the code that they gave me, and I updated everything. But I didn't know that I had to also update uh, the petitioner uh, address because they didn't give me an app, an, uh, an, an, a code to access that account or, or anything. The thing is that they, they told me that, and then they say, okay, we're going to send you a new one to the, new, the current address, which so I, I didn't update anything for the petitioner, which is my wife. We, we, we live together. I guess they assume that it's the same address now, but they just uh, forgot about it. And now they, they told me that. 
the thing is that I cannot access that uh, uh, notice. And I tried to reach out to them through chat. And what they told me is that they cannot uh, uh, send me a copy of that letter because I'm not a petitioner. And I was wondering, they sent the letter, but I don't know to which address they sent it because they don't, they didn't tell me. They just said like, okay, we just sent it to the current address. Uh, why, why can't your spouse call them and ask for the I-130? Uh, so if she, calls the through the, if she called through the phone, they can, uh, I don't know, email that to her? Well, uh, she's the petitioner, right? Yeah, she's a petitioner. So in theory, they send it to her. Um, and they can't talk to you about the I-130. They can only talk to her about the I-130. Mm, okay. That's the reason why I cannot see the, the RFP in the portal then. Yeah, you can only see the 45 stuff because that's in your name. Okay, okay, okay. Because I, I thought I could see it because I have all the, the cases in the in the portal. Like, I could see everything. The I have, like, I-130. I, I have the I-485. Uh, and also I have the... The advanced parole document, which they forgot about it, and the EAD, uh, which they sent already. <laughs> uh, I they guess that to, they're not going to. They huh? sent it to you at the new address? They sent the EAD to the new address? No, they sent it back to the old address. They did send the, uh, the RFP for the I-485 uh, I to the new address. They sent that to the new address, but not the, uh, the RFP for the I-130. So you think like mm -hmm. if my wife then called then and they can email her uh, the RFE or they can send her like an access code so she can uh, add the, the case to her account in USCIS? That's, that's the next thing that I would try. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, I'll do that. But I mean, I'm kind of like a little mad because they just forgot about it. If they call the the, the, the notice back, yeah. why did they try to reach out? I'd be mad too, but also you're sort of lucky because sometimes they just deny the case saying you didn't reply to the RFE. Oh, well, yeah. So it could Th be worse. That's one of <laughs> it could be yeah, worse. Yeah, that, that's true. It could be worse. Okay. Uh, I'll try that. I uh, just wanted uh, to ask you about that, like why I couldn't see it. And, yeah, I think uh, you got to have her sort of take the. I mean, you could get on the phone with both of you together and they'll talk to both of you, but you got to start beating the bushes to get that. Okay, okay. Uh, we'll do that. I just want to wait for her to get back from home with my work. Then. Yep. Try to reach Bye, Pablo. Me. See you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Later. You got it. Kevin is here. Let's see what Kevin has to say. Hi, Kevin. You're on mute. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. All right, so I'm about to file a K-1 visa, uh, and we're, the last thing I'm stuck on is uh, my fiance's previous marriage, which was not a legal marriage. <clears throat> she's married and divorced back in 2013. Uh, she's from Indonesia, and what they did was called a Nika Siri. I don't know if you've heard that, but it's basically a secret wedding. Okay. And... Uh, so the government has no, you know, no official file on it and I'm not sure. Uh, I did contact the embassy in Jakarta and they were like, put her mar marital status as single and um, say she's never married, but include a statement. I'm just wondering if, if that's the uh, right, right train of thought. I'm looking at the visa reciprocity table on, on marriage certificates from... Indonesia. So marriage certificate. It's a marriage certificate, which is an Akti Perkwanan or a Suratni Ka. Is that what you said? Suratni Ka? Uh, it's, it's not any of those. It's a Nikki Siri. It's not a, a red. It's not a legal marriage by Indonesian government. They don't see it as legal. Okay. Um, uh, so she can't get any doc. She can't get like a marriage certificate. She can't get like a divorce decree because it doesn't exist. So was it like a religious one? Yeah. And was it short lived? Yeah, it was like a year and a half. And so, so did they get divorced by the imam? Like they, they just, he just said, "I divorce you. I divorce you. I divorce you," and it was all done. Nothing was recorded with the government. Correct. It's basically like we're done, and that's it. Mm -hmm. um, well. 
I think that this is an important question that shouldn't be answered over a call like this. I think we actually have to, I think somebody has to look into Indonesian law to make sure that what you're being told is true because they love to fuck people on marriages that don't look like marriages or marriages that you think are marriages. You know, that I think you need to nail this down. I think you're right to check before you file, but I think you're okay. I mean, I think you could go ahead, but I'm worried about saying that she's never been married before. Um, yeah, that's where the that's where the embassy was like, put her down as that, but include a statement, basically, and try to show evidence. And the only evidence I can get is like, you know, I guess they're very rural back. You know, they're they like sure. she goes through the village head, and he can produce like a letter saying they got divorced, um, but it's not the government, so I don't know if the U.S. cares about that. I think the bigger thing is to figure out is this kind of a marriage legally operative in Indonesia and for purposes of immigration, because that's something we've been seeing them screw around with more and more. That's what I'm worried about for you. Uh, from my research, I've seen Indonesia flat out just it's not legal. Okay. It's an un, it's an unregistered marriage. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But. Well, but that's and, that, that's my concern is like if I say she, you know, then the U.S. is going to be like, well, can you show proof? And then I'd be like, well, I can't really right. show proof. Right. And then she can't be your fiance. Yeah. Yeah. So I can't I can't tell you not I can't tell you what to do right now without having done the research myself. I, I think that what you're saying sounds like the like a good understanding, but I can't guarantee that. Right. Yeah. Now I can, she went to the uh, religious affairs office there and they can give her a document saying that um, she's eligible to marry. So that's pretty good. But that's basically, uh, she was like, can you show a record that I've never been married? And they're like, no, we can't do that, but they mm -hmm. can supply that document. So that'd be a good document to have. I might just go with that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. All right. Thank you. Hey, buddy. Sorry, I couldn't give you a definitive answer. Uh, that's a, It's a slippery slope, that one. <laughs> <laughs> it is, indeed. See you, buddy. Good luck. Bye. All right, all right. Jihau asks a mandamus question. How fast will the U.S. attorney be notified if the writ of mandamus is filed electronically, and do they call USCIS immediately? So here's what I'll say about that. Is there a WMQ for U.S. attorneys? The, some U.S. attorneys' offices are dialed in, and as soon as a government defendant has been sued, they're notified even before we sue them. We know that to be true because U.S. attorneys have told us that. Other offices, the U.S. attorney just receives it by mail. And and even within that, there's a range when it comes to writs of mandamus. I was just explaining this to a potential client who actually just hired us to sue them for his long-delayed green card case. And what I told him was places like Baltimore which is where his case is pending, um, Dallas, Nebraska. Those places are used to being sued, and the U.S. attorneys are used to cutting deals and making lawsuits go away by getting things moving on immigration. So those offices have this amazing ability to get started as soon as we file the lawsuit. I think the, the U.S. attorneys notify the defendant agencies. The defendant agencies get moving. Baltimore is great. When we sue Baltimore... Like when we when we mail them a copy, they have 60 days to answer. Well, Baltimore gets working right away. Chicago gets working right away. Now, other places like Denver, they wait until the 60th day to like open up their mail and say, oh, shit, we've been sued. Right. So it, it does change office by office. But um, that's sort of what we see, that it all depends on the way the U.S. attorney handles things, the way the local field office handles things or the service center handles things. It really is a case by case basis. When we when we had a bunch of cases in D.C., it would really turn on which U.S. attorney that we had. So we really get a lot of different uh, outcomes and the different approaches. And of course, we really appreciate the people who um, get working on the cases sooner rather than later, as do our clients. Let's see what Adel has to say. Adel, are you with us? Adel, you're on mute. Adil Ali Khan, are you here? Going once. Going twice. Sold. Masalama, Adil. All right. Let's say hi to Shamram. Hello, Shamram. Hello. Uh, thank you. Uh, actually, uh, 
I re- uh, my wife uh, is on J2 visa. And so I requested EAD card for her, for authorization for her. And uh, when I filed a request for her, I received uh, an RFE. Uh, they request marriage certificate and personal photo. I sent them a marriage certificate, but unfortunately we, uh, you know, I don't know why we didn't see the photo request. And so we just sent a marriage certificate for them. And after some days, I saw that our status uh, on USCIS changed to close. And before they, you know, issue the uh, deny letter, three days before that, I chat with Emma. And so I understood that, oh, uh, I forgot to put uh, our personal photo. Uh, and so they told, Emma told me that, so uh, yes, I let the, let the USCIS to know about uh, uh, that you forgot put your personal photo and also they give me one ID number for our chat and I let them yes please open reopen to let us to upload our personal photo or let us to uh, resend uh, our photo to them but after three days I saw that they issue a deny letter and mm-hmm. they actually yeah mentioned that yeah yes because you do not put your uh, personal photo, so your case was denied. But they told us we can uh, request for motion to reopen or motion to uh, reconsider, uh, but we cannot request uh, for appealing their uh, decision. Uh, and also they told us that we can file uh, I-2090 file. And mm-hmm. uh, so yeah, request for motion to uh, motion to reopen. Yeah. Yes, yes. And so I appreciate if you can uh, yeah, give me assistance at how to consider this matter. I would just file a new case and give them put in everything you didn't put in the first time. So re- refile. I mean, a 290B could take twice as long as that. And it sounds like they were this close to approving it. So I would just file another one. I wouldn't I wouldn't waste the time on a motion to reopen. OK, I, I would just file a new one. OK, OK. Uh, I, you, you mean I should uh, send them uh, I twenty ninety or or file a new it? file a new EAD application for her. Oh, okay, okay. Start okay. over. Okay, okay. But when you start over, send them your marriage license. Send them your photos. Show that you're married. You, you. Whenever okay. you want to get a benefit that is even sideways based on marriage, you have to prove up the marriage. Okay, okay. So I should resend again all material to them i would okay 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 so how can i be in touch with you i should oh yeah we'd be happy to help so you can email us info at hacking just send us an email we, we'd be happy to help you with this uh okay let me to screen share. Yep. okay okay thank you so much thank you bye shower see you buddy thank you thank you bye. yeah that's a bummer when they deny your case because you didn't give them everything that they asked for um and sometimes I get it. You get sort of excited. You see, oh boy, we're this close to being done. They send you a request for evidence. It says, hey, send us your marriage certificate. Your eyes sort of lock in on that marriage certificate. So I can see how that would happen. So hopefully we can get Sharam and his wife all squared away. All right. All right. Let's say, I think Adel's back. What up, Adel? Hi, Jim. How are you? Sorry about that. I'm good, buddy. No worries. How you doing? I'm at work and I was helping a judge. And helping a judge, yes, I work for the nice. U.S. Court of District, so oh, nice, um, yeah. We have a lot of right. friends at the district, we have a lot of friends at the district courts, we're very yeah. active in the district courts, district court of Illinois, um, in the Chicago office. Oh, one of our favorites, one of our favorites. We love the U.S. attorneys up there, yeah. I did like my oath in March and then got hired for as an IT engineer two months later. <laughs> I love it, yeah, I love it. Oh. Um, I, I like the, I mean, the, the clerk's office is very helpful in Chicago. They're always telling me how I mess things up. So I really oh. appreciate it. They're always, they're always good. You know, they do summonses a little differently up there than they do at the other courts, but it's a, it's right. a really nice work to work with. Yeah. The, as soon as I got here, everybody was like, we're super nice. I was like, okay, cool. But I think where I'm at, they're like, you know, 
prosecuting all criminal cases, all the senior yeah. district judges and stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I had a couple of questions about my, I, I'm planning to file for my parents and I was filling out my uh, application online for my uh, father. Um, sure. And when I was done with it, I, it, it told me to print to summarize all the stuff that I've answered. Now, do I have to worry about question number, like number two question, which didn't show up while I was filling it out online, but it did end up, sh uh, you know, showing up when I printed the form. And it says that, you know, how are you related to your, um, um, you know, is your parents adopted or something like that? But I already said that they're my real parents. Like, are they biological and stuff like that? So they didn't, it, that question didn't pop up while I was filling the form online, but it did show up in that print summary of what i filled out and that's mm -hmm. what i was like worried about like what if they're like you didn't answer this question because it didn't I, I checked it two three times logging out logging back in and that question doesn't pop up and um so yeah are, that's are, the, one of the questions are mom or dad are they in the united states or they overseas no they're overseas um are you again i know th that for the IT guy, I probably shouldn't ask you this, but are you against yeah. filing it on paper? I thought it would be easy all, uh, online, but I don't mind doing, filling it out online. Yeah, I, I think filling it out and printing it out and signing it and mailing it in with the payment and the fees. I think USAS is trying to get more people to file electronically, but people tell me all the time of glitches like this. I just think uh -huh. you want to have a nice, clean record of everything that you um, filed, and I would okay. try that first. So that would require their signatures, right? Or no? Um, yeah, but they can be scanned in signatures. Oh, okay. So I can just scan them the uh, paper uh, that I filled they out. Sign and it, and they sign it. They sign it and send it back. Yep, that's a COVID awesome. thing. Yep. Okay, got it. And the second is um, there was an option of submitting an official document online. So I wasn't sure like what, what official document. So I was maybe because when I Googled online, it was saying like a birth certificate and stuff like that. Or, um, you know, so I did end up loading it. That was another online question that popped up. I know I never got to fill this out when I, you know, came to U.S. and I filled out an I-130 form for myself on mm -hmm. behalf of my wife. So that was one thing I wanted to ask. Like, what is that official document? It doesn't even say like what document. But when I Googled it, it says that you can upload his birth certificate his marriage certificate and i was like okay what do you um, have it, it's it's one of the questions online like you know and not questions but you know it was telling me to upload uh an official document for the beneficiary and i was like what official document it, it doesn't tell you like what document and when i googled online it was telling me you can submit your birth his birth certificate or you know they just yeah it, that's it what i'm saying like, I, yeah i get that but what do you actually have I have his birth certificate. I have his marriage certificate. Um, so I would upload both or submit oh yeah. both. Yep. That's what I did. Um, and one of the documents was like one of the they wanted me to upload is like, you know, upload his name and address in foreign language. I'm like, what? And and though so the, I, I went to Google, translated his name, um, how to write it in Urdu and then you know did that, too. And I was like, that's odd because all these things I never got to do it when in, during my time. So it was that, part, just that parts that parts everybody now. You might have him scan in that page too, or have him print it out himself and write it, and and then scan that in too as well. Either way is fine. Okay. Um, sorry, I got a couple of more questions. Um, yeah, you're fine. Is it okay to put down another country for the interview date once they're approved? Say that again. Is it is it okay to put down another uh, country uh, apart from where he's living? Uh, to get Where an interview live? date quicker, Pakistan. he lives in Pakistan. Um, does he so... have the right to live somewhere else? I mean, you should put where he's living. So, if, okay, if if he's been living for the last three years in Paris, France, and put Paris, France, but if he's living in Pakistan, you got to put Pakistan. Got it, got it, understood. Um, and he was deported with me, and my mom, and everybody was deported like 15 years back. We overstayed our uh, visa. And, you know, that was like 15 years back all, and we were barred for like 10 years. Um, and that it's been like more than 10 years that he's been in Pakistan. So should I submit those documents with this application so that the, um, so it doesn't get delayed or just avoid it? 
No, you should do a couple of things. One is you got to be real careful how you answer all the questions, especially when you get to the next stage on the DS two hundred and sixty. Make make sure you don't hide anything. Right. Um, and also, I would get the I one hundred and thirties on file, and then right. I would I would I would do a Freedom of Information Act request for him and for your mom mm-hmm. and for you to get yeah. all the records of your deportation. Right. We already have it though. That's what I'm saying. Like instead of them oh. requesting, because the, it, it that takes a lot of time to come. It, like takes like about six months. So instead well, I don't of think, oh, it's the same agency, they shouldn't ask for that. They, they shouldn't ask for documents. When you get to the State Department, they're going to ask you for the details of his deportation. You're going to have to provide right. it then. But for the I-130, the I-130 is just about whether or not he's your father and you're a U.S. citizen. Right, because in the form, it does ask him if he was uh, in uh, removal proceedings and why was he removed and stuff like that. So instead of them requesting the Freedom Act to get that same information I already have, why not just scan it and upload it with the I-130 applicant so it doesn't get delayed? That's what I was thinking. Maybe maybe like the order of deportation. I wouldn't do much else besides that. Like the I order would you, the whole file. The, you mean the, the reason of the deportation? So so what you're proposing is is that you want to answer yes, which you should, uh-huh. that he's been deported. And then you want, you're saying you want to submit some documentation related to that. The only right. documentation related to that that I would submit to them would be the order of deportation. Okay. Um, and one of the other questions was like, my mother's passport is expiring in June, 2024. Mm-hmm. And so is, does that concern in this process? Like when I'm submitting the documents? No, cause you'll, you'll be a year at USCIS on the I one thirties. And by that time she'll get her new passport. And when you go to the right. national visa center, you'll just use the new passport. All right. Got it. Um, all right. Awesome. Thank you, Jim. I'll just, uh, you know, file it, you know, do the paperwork, like, you know, by hand instead of online. That's what I would and do. Then, and then, you know, cause that's what, that's one thing that popped in my mind that they're like purposely like, you know, missing out, like popping in random questions so that the application got delayed or something like that, you know? So no, I was like, no. that wasn't it's there. Just so. It's just a glitch. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, Jim. Thank you for your time. Bye, Ed. I'll uh, see you, buddy. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Later. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let's see. This is the Immigration Answer Show. My name is Jim Hacking. we got about 23 minutes left. I'll be here answering as many of your immigration law-related questions as I can. The sun is setting behind me. Sorry about the bright light. I probably should have parked a little bit differently, but I didn't want the light in my eyes. So next time I'll park this way. How about that? All right. Abdul is here. What do you say, Abdul? What's up, Jim? How you doing? I'm good, buddy. How you doing? The well. I think if you, uh, if you remember me or not, this may be that the third time I'm talking to you. So uh, I will, I'll remind you of my case real quick. So I, uh, the last time we convert, uh, convert, uh, have conversation, I had, uh, I get married with my wife in, uh, in February 2022 in overseas Jordan. So mm-hmm. then I moved here. I moved here in April uh, this year, 2023. And uh, last month, we naturally agreed our relationship cannot be continue. So we separated since then. Oh, yeah, I remember. Wait, but you have your two-year green card, right? Yes, sir. Yep. Okay. All right. So uh, I, I told you there were a lot of issues around all stuff. So uh, we agreed last month to uh, do not continue. Both of us agree about it, and uh, we separated uh, separate, uh, since then. So the thing is, uh, she want to finalize that divorce paper overseas Jordan because she told me that uh, the the divorce uh, it's gonna be done and finalized within thirty days better than wait here like a year uh like, like waiting here separately as a year then then get the divorce so my question is uh is that gonna be effect of uh, she, she told me she asked a lawyer on, on that so that's gonna be fixed so i'm just want to to make sure if that's gonna affect my uh my case with my green card uh citizenship and citizenship and after after when this two years uh, expired and if uh if not, would be helpful because she. Uh, hold on, I forgot the word. If you don't mind. Uh, okay. So she she agreement and is she, and she willing to 
hopefully I think to help for any comments, statements. So it helped me with this case as well. So, uh, so are that's... you asking, are you asking me, Jim, does the fact that we're getting divorced so quickly after getting the green card, does that affect my ability to get the 10 year green card and citizenship? Or are you asking me if the divorce is in Jordan? Or do you, is that what you're asking about where the divorce is? Or are you asking about the actual effect of a divorce, wherever it is? Yeah. I, uh, yeah, let's say about Jordan for now. I, I know in general going to be affected, but for Jordan for now. So if I, I mean, I'm not a family law lawyer, so you should talk to a divorce lawyer where you live. Um, but if I were in the United States and my spouse was in the United States, even if we got married in Jordan or Egypt or Rwanda or wherever, I would want a divorce in the United States because... I live in the United States. I know the courts have jurisdiction over me in the United States. And even if she wants to go ahead and get divorced in Jordan, I would still want to get divorced here in the United States. I would want an American, especially if you think that at some point in your long distant future, not, not before you get your conditions removed, not before you get your citizenship, but if you think that sometime down the road, you're going to sponsor someone else, get married, someone back from the home country and sponsor them for a green card. I think that, that there's a question in my mind as to whether or not a divorce that happens in a third country, even the country of where the marriage occurred, if the if the petitioner and the beneficiary both live in the United States, I don't I don't know whether or not that foreign court still has what's called jurisdiction over the two of you. Maybe they do because that's where you got married, but maybe they don't because you don't live there anymore. I know for a fact that if you get divorced in Baltimore, if you get divorced in Chicago, I know 100% that USCIS will honor that and everybody else will honor that. Whether that's true for a divorce in Jordan, I have no idea. So if you're asking me, Jim, if you're looking out for me, Abdul, and you want what's best for me, what do you want? I want a divorce in America. Because I don't care about her. I don't care that it's faster. I don't care about any of that shit. My duty, if you were my client, my duty would be to you. And what's best for you is a divorce from an American court. From where you both live. I mean, I took family law in law school and I really enjoyed the class. I would never want to do divorce or family law. But there was a whole part of that class where we were studying. Because like sometimes... Sometimes, like sometimes, Abdul, there's kids involved and somebody's playing tricks. And so one person goes to Jordan, gets divorced. One person goes to Texas to get divorced because the person that goes to Texas thinks they're going to get a more favorable judge. And the person that goes to Jordan thinks they're going to get custody of the kids faster. So there's this battle of divorces and there's competing divorce orders and there's competing orders from judges about who gets custody and who pays alimony and all that stuff. Like that's a whole area of the law, like within family law. It's called conflicts of laws. And you've got to like, that's a real specialty to see, is it, is it who filed first? Is it, is it which court still had jurisdiction? There's all this bullshit that you might have to think about if you ever want to rely on that divorce that I know for a fact, you're not going to have to worry about if you get divorced in Arkansas or Virginia or wherever you and your spouse live. Gotcha. So uh, if we like, because basically I, I'm, I don't talk, contact with her now, she uh, basically stop it. So her, her mom texts me and tell me like, oh, if, if we if, if we pay the all our payments for, from Jordan, would you like apply to sign it for it? And, uh, and right, so that. say yes, it's fine. it's fine to get divorced in, in Jordan, but I don't think that should be your only divorce. That's all I'm saying. Oh, so is it like like is that fine to get like uh, divorce yep. in Jordan and totally fine and do and, and and do it and do it here uh, yep. in one year? Yeah, and, and is is that gonna be acceptable either way? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so so it's it's fine to do a divorce in Jordan, but uh, I I have to do it or, or it's it's fine to do it in the, uh, like next year here, to also. Yeah. Yeah. Now the question then will be when you apply for your 751, you don't want to make it look like you were sneaky. Like you don't want to list the American divorce only and to make them think that you were acting like you were married longer than you were for purposes of your 10 year green card. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So don't be too clever. Yeah, I got you. 
it's it's not it, it, like but, uh, okay well, what about the documents and statements would, would, would it fine like yeah, like, yeah we want all that you want all that you want all that stuff yep from her like to say about like the marriage was she, real and all that stuff if she, if she will yeah yeah you I don't think, yeah because because like the, the reasons was like for her fault her, her fault so i i it's it, she, and she all she she totally understanding about the whole situation i'm not like running out and that's it yeah like so here's here's how i would do it i would go ahead and say yeah yeah baby let's get that divorce in jordan let's get that taken care of then once she signs that then you have me or somebody else or you get a long statement from her about how yeah this shit was real it just didn't work out because i was catting around and all that stuff get that nailed down and then do your divorce in america if if that's what we think needs to happen i think we could talk to a divorce lawyer where you live and ask them is it, there might be a way i don't know there might be a way for you to record the jordanian divorce in illinois or in virginia wherever you live and that might be good enough okay that's all right and, and uh, the last question is: uh, Is it far, is it needed to to get uh, like separation agreement? Either if we don't have kids, we don't have anything. Because I hear like it's not needed if uh, if I get uh, if there's nothing between mutual between us. If you're getting divorced anyway, the separation agreement just that just slows shit down. So I don't know that doesn't really help you. So so that's not gonna be doing anything. Obviously, I don't think so. Okay. Bye, Abdul. See you, buddy. All right, everybody. I saw up above in the comments that our friend Christine, where is it here? Let me pull it up. Christine, where is it? I thought I saw Christine got her green card. Here, where is it? Finally got my green card today. Thanks, Jim, for all your advice. Good job, Christine. We're happy for you. That's great news. Very great news. All right. Let's go to Huberphil. Hello, Huberphil. Hello. Hi, Jim. Can you hear me? I can. How you doing? I think you can hear me. Okay. Um, cause I'm, I'm not hearing you too clearly. All right. I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, ask you my question. So, I have a son who's currently in Iraq. He uh, filed an I-129F petition to get his fiance over here. And they're currently living under extreme living conditions. There are drone attacks happening regularly in the area where they are. He also has an illness um, that is documented. And he's made two expedition requests to uh, USCIS and both of them have been denied. So we're wondering if he has any other recourse. He's a U.S. citizen sponsoring his fiance for a fiance visa, or he's the fiance. Correct. That is correct. And he is a U.S. citizen sponsoring her. Has USCIS approved the I one twenty nine F yet? Well, they acknowledged receipt of it. Um, they have not told us to do anything further. So they're just basically, he and his fiance are just waiting. Um, but uh, he is living over there in Iraq with her right now. And he said that the conditions are getting pretty bad. There are regular drone attacks and so forth. But USCIS did not even give him an opportunity to... Um, provide any documentation of what they're going through nor his illness when did they file they filed in march and um they've been waiting ever since pretty much of this year march of this year i'm sorry say that again please march yeah of march of this year okay um what Correct. state 2023 what state does your son live in? A California. So I'm not a big believer in getting members of Congress involved, but I mean, first of all, this just proves to me what I say all the time that USCIS doesn't grant most expedite requests, doesn't even consider most expedite requests. And even when they do, they say, yeah, we'll expedite it. Then they don't do squat. So I, I think that you might be banging your head against a wall that's never going to answer. 
So the long and the short of it is there's no real recourse. They could try to get a member of Congress to intervene on their behalf, but USCIS does whatever the hell they want. They could care less about your son's safety. Their answer would be, well, he should go back to America and wait for his fiance like most people. So they're cold hearted. They're mean. They don't give a crap about your son or his fiance, and they don't want to put his case ahead of anybody else's. So you can try to get you can try to get senators involved and all that stuff, but they're not going to be in any hurry to bring someone to the United States from Iraq. It's just how it is. So am I offline? I'm online still. All right, Huli, thank you. All right. Yeah, I don't know. She uh, she disappeared there for a minute. I'm not sure what happened. Um, We have about 10 minutes left. Boy, the picture looks like shit. I don't want to do these too many times from the car, but I lost my earbuds and I didn't want to do this in the lobby of the training facility. So, hey, thanks, Huli, for that reminder. If you have a minute, we got a one-star review the other day. We got a two-star review the other day from some disgruntled people who I've never heard of. So if you could do us a favor and leave us a five-star review, go to reviewhackinglaw.com or go to Google and look for our St. Louis office in Kirkwood. Um, that would be great. Um, I'm not sure if we changed that link yet, but we need to, Huli. Remind me tomorrow. All right. Did she come back? I don't see her back. So I don't know. Maybe she lost her internet. All right. Um, off camera, please. I'm going to pull you up. Go ahead and turn off your camera real quick so that I don't show you inadvertently. All right. There we go. Off camera, you're on. Yes. Um, hello, Jim. How are you? I'm good. I have, um, I came here with a visa B1, B2, and I applied for asylum on July 2020. Uh, the, my, my, <laughs> I'm a little bit emotional. Uh, so I had an issue on my country when I was uh, working for the government, and I have the high position there. When I filed the paper, I did give the, my case to the one person. And later on, I learned that the, on a 589, it wasn't my case, but it was different for a, a politician threatened, life threatened. So and you're saying that the, you're, saying, was, you're saying the person yes. the person that filed your case made up a bunch of stuff and put it in your file. Is that what you mean? Yes, and he didn't make my real case, but he did a different one. And you I realize did talk that, with the. You realize yes. that after it was on file. I'm sorry. You realized that after you had filed it, after it was on file. Yes, I did realize that. On um, when I get it, the uh, seven fifty six for fingerprints. Mm. I did talk already with uh, with your office, and I explain my situation and the uh, five eighty nine. I also emailed the five eighty nine, which already doesn't have the evidence, but my case have already. Okay, my so real situation. Let me just let me just get this straight. Let's just make up your name. Let's say your name is Miriam. Okay, you're okay. in real life. In real life, your name is Miriam, and Miriam worked for the government back in the home country. Miriam fears going back home, and and for for the reason that she was in the government and all these other threats and all this stuff. That's that's Miriam's real case. But then, in Miriam's actual five eighty nine. Is there stuff about Jim or is there stuff about Miriam that isn't about Miriam or what can you describe to me sort of what what's wrong with the case? So on a 589, it's not the real story of me. Okay, but does it have your name? Does it have like yes, it's have my name there. So it's like okay, so it's like okay, so so Miriam worked for the government. That's the real story. But in there it says Miriam, um, Miriam is uh, an ethnic minority and is being persecuted. And it's like totally about somebody totally else. Yeah. 
it's some something else it's not the real situation example i was on a real it's uh, that um i was in uh, the mayor of municipality i was working on a water company water supplier company and the mayor i had the conflict with the mayor because uh 10 years before i discovered that this person which was simple employee of the municipality falsified the stamp of our company but you know how the the small country works and they cover this one when he become the mayor he start fighting me you know what what i'm saying I he got start you. persecuting me i got you so so you have like a real asylum case but this this person that you hired they just made up somebody else like they probably use somebody else's story in your case yes what country are you from i'm from albania and this person that you hired, they're a notario, or how did you find them in the first place? No, it's just uh, someone recommended to me. It's just a simple person. How much did you pay him? One thousand. Yeah. I know it's a mistake, okay. but I discovered, like I said, I I I write it my story to him, and I send it to him, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. on December. So I filed it on uh, July. On December, I I discovered that it was a different one. When and he, you... he argued that this is the, with this case, you can win, not with yours. So it's, I don't know. But he told you that after you filed or before? After I filed. So after I discovered filed... it was different, not the real you... situation. When you when you signed it, you took you took him at his word, and you figured that what you had told him was in there. And then later on in December, you found out that it wasn't. So right? I he said to me, write on uh, history your history, and then I will fill up your five eighty nine. Got it. Okay. All right. Um, did you you said you. Do you know who in my office you talked to? It's just a simple person. It's not a, doesn't have an office. No, at my when you called my office, who did you talk to? My office with a Daniel, Daniel. and the okay. lawyer. Yeah, I sent with Daniel and one of the lawyers. Okay, uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk to them tomorrow, and I'll email you tomorrow. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks. Julio will find you for me, and we'll talk. We'll talk soon. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. She's waving her hand. Nope. Hold on. Let me see what she's saying. Hold on. Huli, yeah? You're still on oh, mute, Huli. Sorry. <laughs> no, um, I can't find her on pipe drive. Dan I don't Daniel, have Daniel, no. I'll just ask Daniel. He'll find her. Okay. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. We'll talk, we'll talk soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye. All right, everybody. That'll do it for today's show. What time tomorrow, Huli? I'm not sure what time we're going tomorrow. Four o'clock, usual time. I'll be back in the studio tomorrow at 4 p.m. Central. Thanks, everybody. Uh, again, if you could leave us that five-star review so that we can knock out that one-star review, we'd appreciate it. Hope you all have a good night. This was a good show. Thanks, everybody, for coming on. Thanks, everybody who was watching. And we will see you tomorrow at 4 p.m. Central. Bye, guys.